1. I'm a hermit and rarely interact with anyone. Plus, COVID happened, giving me a socially acceptable reason to hermit. I live in a small town in the Rocky Mountains next to the famous Rocky Mountain town here. It's generally quieter and people are pleasant, save for an influx of tourists on the weekend. My GP works in the famous town and I was admitted for a short hospital stay. The problem is, the only CT machine was in the smaller town hospital that I live in, 20 minutes away, so I was sent back to my town for the CT. This is going to sound straight up ridiculous. Everyone around was baffled. I was transported through the back entrance to the ER where the CT machine was located, and straight to the machine. My doctor was waiting back at the other hospital to do another procedure. Busy, crappy day for me. And I wasn't an ER patient, I just needed the CT machine. Granted, being a small town, the ER has a confusing layout. But there are a big set of doors between the ER and the waiting room, like every other ER I've ever been to. It was a Friday, tourist season, blah blah. So I'm crossing the ER from the back entrance. A Kathy Bates-looking woman bolts through the door with like four kids in tow shouting at me that I can't skip the line because it's not fair, and her grandkids are very, very sick with a butt disease, rotting gums, nose ulcers, whatever. I don't remember. It was so loud that all the staff immediately froze in their tracks, while the kind nurse explained that I was a patient of that hospital just there to use a machine and that their number would be called very soon. I sunk down in my wheelchair and basically turtled out of sight. I didn't want to engage. Kathy Bates started hollering. For the record, I love Kathy Bates. She's an incredible actress, no hate. That's just what she looked like. But anyway, Kathy Bates started hollering about how they were on a trip to Canada from Montana and their vacation was being wasted because the Canadian healthcare system favored only those with insurance and were Canadian. Just spouting bullshit didn't make sense. The kindly nurse didn't know how to answer the nonsensical nonsense, and repeated that they should go back to the waiting room. Kathy Bates yelled back that if they didn't get in soon, she would leave a bad review on some website. The nurse noticed that her grandkids had wandered off, and told her to go find them. I had my CT and left, wondering what had transpired, and remember to repeatedly thank the saints of the healthcare system at every possible moment. Y'all are heroes. 2. This happened today while me, 20-year-old female, and my mom, 39, and two sisters, 14 and 7, were cleaning out our yard. For context, we live in a smaller, older-looking house on a relatively gentrified street with a lot of small to medium-sized but high-end apartment buildings. It's still the same neighborhood, despite them being three- to five-story buildings with underground parking. So we have two big metal dumpsters in the neighborhood, one at the start of the neighborhood and one near the end. We live near the middle, so my mom decided to just request a private bin from the government to place outside of our own gate, as to not have to walk too much to throw away our trash when we were busy. Well, let's just say that after five years of rough treatment from the government waste collection company, it gave its last service and we had to request a replacement, which will take a few days. In the meantime, we had to take turns walking to the dumpsters on either side to throw our trash. It's never a problem and shouldn't be because it's all of our taxes that pay for waste collection anyway. My mom sent both of my sisters to throw a bag of yard cuttings to any of the dumpsters, and they decided to go to the one near the start of the neighborhood for once. It's alright, my mom says it's okay, and stays near the gate to keep an eye on them, while I continue to clean the porch. A few minutes later, I can hear my mom start yelling, then running in the direction that my sisters went in, and I nearly died thinking something horrible had happened, so I followed her. At the start of the neighborhood were my sisters, near the dumpster, that was off to the side of the building, and a woman was full-on screaming at them from her second-floor balcony, with her husband just watching from the siding door. I couldn't hear what the woman was saying, as of yet, but I did hear when my mom started tearing the lady a new one from in front of my sisters when she got there. My mom is a bit of a hothead, and while I am too, she tends to make irrational decisions more, and her English begins to slip up, 
English is her second language, which makes it hard to get points across or understood. So, as usual, I walk up and take over and tell her to calm down while I deal with the Karen. My mom was pulled back by my sisters to the other side of the road, and I looked up to look at the dumbass on the second floor. What in the world are you saying, ma'am? You can't throw your trash in there. I'm gonna give you the fucking trash collection bill. Ma'am, this is a public neighborhood dumpster. I pay to live in this neighborhood and for this trash collection. You can't throw it in there unless you pay for it to be picked up. At this point, I'm utterly confused on whether she was stupid and didn't see the big fat government stamp painted on all sides of the dumpster. Ma'am, we live in this neighborhood too. She then makes the mistake of ignoring me and looking towards my sisters at the other side of the street and begins to yell her head off. Both of you take the trash you threw out of the dumpster now or I'm calling the police. There was a lot more cursing than that. My sisters are 7 and 14. She wanted to call the police in them, which immediately set my mom off again. I was quite irritated. Mom said, Shut up! I'm their mom. You talk to me or haul ass back into your apartment. Ma, go home. But this lady is just absolutely screaming and pulls out her cell phone, repeating she's going to call the police and make us pay for trash collection. I immediately lost my patience. Call them then. Get it over with, call them, and tell them that you want them to arrest a 14-year-old and 7-year-old for throwing trash in the dumpster. The lady seemed taken aback, but began directing this at me again. I'll have them lock you all up. You're polluting the neighborhood and dumping trash when you don't pay for the service. Take the trash out of the dumpster before I come break all your faces. You don't pay the waste company either. Call the police and tell them all of this. Do it before I do. That made the husband finally step in, and he pulled her back into the apartment while she still screamed. He came outside by himself while we heard crashing and slamming inside the apartment. You don't have to take the trash back out of the dumpster, just don't do it again. That made me even more irritated, but I took a few deep breaths. Why can't I throw trash in there? It's the public neighborhood dumpsters. Funded by my tax dollars just the same as it's funded by yours. The man had the audacity to snort and shake his head. I know about your people, sweetheart. Don't lie to us. It clicked on, then, what they were both insinuating. You absolute piece of shit. Do not pretend to know anything about me or my family whatsoever. Keep in mind that this is like 10 a.m. on a Monday, and the street was not empty. So the few people going about their business have been stunned by the argument and a neighbor had already called the police about a public disturbance. The police drive a huge expensive Ford truck that they spent all their money on to get because of course they did. This is a developing country after all. And boy that whole story that me, my family, the crazy bitch and her husband and a few neighbors had to recount did not go well for her. Especially when they had to step into the apartment building manager's office to review the security footage which made things go even worse for her and her husband, because the apartment manager was appalled and didn't say a single word to anyone other than the police until she slipped aside and called the owner of the building. Let's just say that my 14 and 7-year-old sisters did not end up taking an air-conditioned ride in the backseat of the Ford to the police station to be charged with threats against a minor and police disturbance. And they neither did get an immediate eviction notice for breaking their lease agreement, while their wife went off to solidify her criminal record, screaming at police officers. People really be batshit crazy nowadays. 3. This is a story that happened to me a few years back. It's between me and my ex, my girlfriend of three years at the time, and the last thing we spoke about before she broke up with me three days later. It was late 2019, a few days before my birthday. During a time, I asked to have a break to think about things and be antisocial. We had been having some issues at the time due to a new member of our friend group who seems to have a need for drama. And the guy she'd been cheating on me with found out about him maybe a week after the breakup. But that's a whole other entitled story. The week before, we had gotten into an argument about three things she had let stew rather than talking to me sooner. It was like a whirlwind. I started getting her to talk and us to make progress on a single topic. 
before whipping to another before any proper footing could be gained. This went on for only an hour, but felt like ages, and I physically and mentally broke down because of it, and is the reason I wanted to take a week-long break to think and recover. Two days later, she calls me up and insisted to talk about wedding plans. Mind you, we hadn't had any conversation before this about marriage, nor had I proposed. Me being confused agreed we had been together for a while, but we were nowhere financially stable enough to have a wedding. I didn't even have a job at the time. Despite my protest, the topic continued. Listing the things she wanted as if from a ransom note led into the topic of her dress. No real ideas, no design or style picked out yet, just the cost. She demands that she get a dress for $6,000 insisting and trying to convince me it's the normal going price. One Google search later and that's disproved. After a bit more arguing, we hang up. The next day it starts again, and by the end of the call I was able to talk the price down to $3,000. Still trying to reason with her and figure out how to finance the rest of this hypothetical wedding. We hang up, and I'm more run down than I was from the argument about the week before. Day three, and she won't budge from the $3,000 price. Still no designs or styles, just a price tag. I have given up and tried playing devil's advocate. If we're going to pay the like for a dress, let's at least have it custom made. Maybe get it made in parts. Maybe get it made as a corset with replaceable skirts. A dress for many occasions. Maybe made for the honeymoon as well ranging from how may I serve or love me daddy to kneel for your queen, or at least made to be adjustable in case we ever wish to renew our vows. But she wouldn't even entertain those ideas, and at the end of the call I had broke down again sobbing and having an asthma attack. I know, I was so weak, right? Well, I finally had enough and told her I was going to talk to her after the break was up, and then we'd finish the discussion. We never did, however, because of the breakup, and when I found out she was cheating, I was devastated. 2020 was the worst year of my life, but before anyone asks, I am now in a much better place. A loving new girlfriend that values communication as much, if not more so, than I do. A stable job, and I cut out toxic friends from my circle. I have no hate for my ex. I hope she has a very happy life. Just far away from me. 4. So to begin, this story takes place at the height of the pandemic when there were a bunch of new rules being put into place. I work in a mall at a store that is known for its crazy stuff, gag gifts, sex toys, t-shirts, etc. We had issues with people refusing to wear masks. Please, no arguments about masks, that's not what this story is about and they would try to get around the rule by eating and drinking in the store and claiming, Oh, I'm just having a drink or a snack. So our head office decided to implement a no food and drinks allowed in store policy. There was also a limit on how many people could be in the store for social distancing. I oftentimes, unfortunately, was left to stand at the door and tell people to put their masks on, no food or drinks, and regulate how many people were in the store at once. It was awful. Plenty of stories. Well, one day I stopped this girl and her friend, who look like teenagers, I'd assume 16, who attempt to walk past me while we're at capacity with a large crepe, which is also dripping whipped cream everywhere. I politely tell them we're at capacity and they'll have to wait, and that food is also not allowed in the store as well, and the following interaction in happens. Hi, we're just at capacity at the moment. It shouldn't be long. We also don't allow food in the store anymore, unfortunately. So, what do you want me to do with this, then? Gestures to the crepe. I'm not sure. You could have your friend hold it or come back when you're done, maybe. Well, that's not happening. I'm sorry, I don't know how to resolve this, then. Well, you can hold it for me. Keep in mind, we're in the middle of a pandemic, and it has barely any paper covering it as it drips. Unfortunately, I can't do that. It is a pandemic, and I'm sure you don't want a stranger touching your food. Well, what the hell am I supposed to do, then? You could just hold it for me. Again, I repeat that I cannot. She huffs and gets ready to leave, muttering about how stupid I am, and how ridiculous it is. 
and I just nervously laugh and tell them to have a good day. I have a pretty severe anxiety disorder, so confrontation usually ends in panic attacks for me. She whips around and starts yelling at me for laughing in her face and demands to speak to a manager. I tell her she absolutely can and apologize profusely while explaining it was a nervous reaction and that I didn't mean to do it. She tries to shove past me and I stop her, telling her, unfortunately, we are still at capacity and she'll have to wait. And she also still couldn't bring the crepe in. That made her much angrier, but she complied, waiting while still saying how I embarrassed her and made her anxiety bad the irony. When she finally can go in, she hands her friend the food and stumps up to the till to speak with my manager. I can't hear the convo, but she leaves without another word, besides a smug look thrown my way. I get called in by the manager. She asks what happened, and I tell her exactly what happened. She then laughs, saying everyone who works there knows I'm an anxious person, and that I'm probably not in trouble. But the girl may make a complaint to head office, and to let my store manager know what happened. Needless to say, the store manager and everyone was on my side, and I did not get in trouble. As she said, I would never maliciously laugh in someone's face, and they all know that. They all agreed she was entitled, and we went on with our lives. Never did get a complaint sent in against me. 5. I'm a 31-year-old male, and I worked at Walmart Wireless Center as a phone tech. The Walmart I used to work for had its own store at the front, that exclusively dealt with phones and contracts, and I was one of the phone techs who worked full-time for ten seventy-five an hour. Big bucks, I know. One day, working 1 to 9 p.m., a lady walks in. Now, Karen, to have me try and fix her phone. I go through my usual questions of, have you tried power cycling it? What happened prior to it no longer working? Did any water get into it? The last question made her confirm that, yes, water did get inside. I asked her how that happened, and she told me very casually that she dropped it in the toilet when she was sitting on it and using said toilet. My initial reaction was to drop the phone out of reflex and disgust, forgetting where I was for a moment. This is the exchange that followed, roughly from memory. Why did you drop my phone? Well, ma'am, you told me you dropped it in the toilet while you were using it, and that was just a reaction to holding it. So your reaction is to drop my phone on the floor. Where is the manager? You broke my phone and you're going to pay for a new one. I'm sorry for dropping your phone. It was just a reflex, but I will get my manager. I radioed my manager to come to the wireless center, and when she arrived, I went to go talk to her and explain the situation. But of course, Karen had to stomp her way over and interrupt me. Your idiot employee dropped my phone and broke it. You're buying me a new one. Oh, Piers, it's true? Yes, it's true, I dropped it. But it was a reaction to holding the phone when she told me she dropped it in the toilet while I was holding her phone. I never told you I dropped it in the toilet. Why are you lying? I'm not lying. That's what you told me happened after I asked if water got in the phone itself. The cameras in here have audio. Manager, you know that. Go check if you don't believe me. I'm going to go review the cameras, ma'am. Please wait here. Before the Karen could object, my manager walked off to the asset protection office. Karen looked really mad at this and got super red before throwing her phone at me and using some super fun cuss words and stormed out. My manager came back about ten-ish minutes later and asked where she went and I told her she got mad, threw her phone at me and left. My manager told me to let her know if she came back and I went and washed my hands. I never did see Karen again in the wireless center, but I did see her at the gas station about two weeks later, and she did her best to pretend I wasn't there. Oh, and the phone? Well, I never did see if it could be fixed or was already a broken phone she tried to scam us with, as Asset Protection collected it while I was washing my hands. To maybe do a report? I don't know, but that was the end of it. Hey everybody, Hellfreezer here, and thank you very much for listening to Idiots in the Wild, episode 73. And thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use their stories in this video. If you enjoyed the video, then please do hit the like before you go, and let's share that video around. Let's get the word out there that there's a new Hellfreezer video up. See if we can get those views up, yeah? 
And a big thank you to everyone who's already doing that. More shares means more videos in the future. Okay, so here we go. Uh, no special shout-outs today. Uh, there is one coming later in the week. can't remember the date, but later in the week. Uh, if you do have a shout-out, of course, you can send it along to kingofthecities at gmail.com. That's kingofthecities at gmail.com. Find that in the description of every video. It's also on the screen right now. Go on, look at the screen. It's right there. See? And you can also find various other links to merchandise and uh, and uh, Twitter and such and, and so on in the description if you so please. Maybe I should do a link tree. Maybe that'd be neater. Do people click on link trees? I think it's better just to have them there. Anyway, let's move along to Hellfreezer's question of the day. And today's question is... Most embarrassing story that you're willing to tell people, right? So that's not the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened to you, just what you're willing to share. Um, thinking of our last story there with the toilet phone. Now, personally, if that had happened to me, and I'm, I'm not sure of the logistics of how you'd be sitting on the toilet, unless you're sitting on it backwards, maybe, that you'd be able to drop the phone into the toilet while using it. No, I'd more likely tell, if that somehow happened, I can't imagine how it would, I'd probably just tell someone, oh, I was running a bath and I had the phone in my hand and accidentally fell into the bath. Because I've actually done that with a phone. I used to have the, this little sill in the bathroom on the window. I used to set my phone there because uh, there was never an issue with the steam or anything like that. It was always fine. Uh, and I'd have like a podcast or an audiobook playing. And one day, I just my head wasn't very clear. I'd sat it down. I guess I hadn't put it fully on the edge. And it ended up getting accidentally knocked into the bath. And it, yeah. Uh, the phone didn't last too long after that, unfortunately. Good phone otherwise, though. Although the one I replaced it with, I think, was better. But the most embarrassing story I'm willing to share, because I've told other people this, is when I was a tiny little hell freezer. Just a, just a, a, just a little ice cube. Uh, I'd gotten out of the bath one day, and this was back in the days when it was common in the UK that to have like a lit fire in the house. I was having a good time just kind of drying myself in front of the fire, and I slipped and fell butt first into the fire. Uh, it was not comfortable sitting down for a while after that, shall we say. Uh, everything healed up well, thankfully, no permanent damage. But uh, good times were not had by Tiny Hell Freezer. So, maybe you have some other experiences you're willing to share. Let me know in a comment below. Okay, and with that, I'm going to head off for now. So until next time, thank you very much for listening, and take very good care of yourselves.